Uh, let's look at another example, this large molecule, beta carotene. When we look at this structure, of course, we can think about, yeah, there's conjugated double bonds. So in a three-dimensional structure for this, and we're going to be considering that length where you have the double bonds conjugated as being the length of my box. Richer features now with this larger molecule. And of course, this model, the particle in a box, is not going to do a great job, but it's going to do a good job or good enough. So let's consider that. Now, remember, we have 10 carbon carbon single bonds, 11 carbon double bond carbons that are alternating. We have a total of 22 carbons in that chain that corresponds to uh, my box uh, for this uh, particle in a box model. So we can count the number of uh, carbon carbon bonds that I'm going to take into account in order to calculate the length of that box. Uh, and again, if we consider an average that every carbon carbon bond is 140 picometers, that's going to give me with this 21 uh, carbon carbon bonds in this box, roughly a length of 2.94 nanometers. Now, the question is, we have to estimate what is the wavelength of the light that has been absorbed by this molecule whenever we have this uh, transition from its ground state to the next higher excited uh, state. And again, if we're just thinking in the simplistic model of having just uh, absorption between electrons in the pi bonds in my pi system, we will considering uh, HOMO and LUMO, uh, where HOMO is going to be equal to uh, the energy level of my particle in the box, and that's going to be N, the excitation is going to go to energy level n plus 1. So each carbon in the chain contributes with one p electron, then you have 22 p electrons, there are two of those electrons per pi orbital, so we have 11 pi orbitals that are going to be filled, and those are the 11 carbon-carbon, uh, carbon double bond carbon. Uh, with that, remember this is another equation that we have, and this is just a different way to put it because here I'm using h bar instead of h, as in the previous example, but the result should be exactly the same. The only thing that we have to do is to uh, put the right or the correct uh, constants. Now, again, in terms of the number of double bonds, uh, the transition energy is going to be given by this bunch of, bunch of constants times two times the number of double bonds plus one. And remember that we can calculate this length of the box according to the average carbon-carbon bonding. So LUMO, in this case, is going to be uh, 12, which is d plus 1. HOMO is going to be n equals 11, which is going to be equal to the number of double bonds. So when we make this, the proper substitutions with the proper constants, etc., et we end up calculating that, again, these number of double bonds, it's 11. 2 times 11 is 22 plus 1 is 23. We do all the multiplications that we need to do, and then we end up calculating that the change in energy is going to be roughly 1.6 10 to the minus 19 joules. And also, uh, make sure that you do the unit analysis and convince yourself that all the units that I have here cancel and give you finally joules, since that's what it should be in terms of the energy, but convince yourselves, okay? And that energy, according to the formulation that we had before, is going to correspond to a wavelength of about 1200 nanometers. Now, again, experimentally, uh, it's known that these, um, this transition goes around 500 nanometers. Not great. But it's not too bad either, considering that the model is a huge simplification from the real distribution of electrons in these rather complicated molecules. Anyhow, the model works to a certain extent, gives you decent results, kind of on the same ballpark of experimental values, even though they're not necessarily the same, but as a good a first approximation, it's a model that works decently well. Now, if you use the formulation that we had before, where we had already defined this constant, we do the multiplication, and sure enough, we get exactly the same result. And here is one of the examples of the application of that particle in a box model to a type of molecules that you may be familiar with from your organic chemistry classes. These pi conjugated systems, where I take the extent of that conjugation as the size of the box, and I'm thinking about electrons that can be delocalized, moving around the extent of that carbon chain. Okay, that was one example. Please let me know if you have any questions. 